Welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always, I'm reading with a vengeance and I hope you are as well. I have tried my hand again at another vlog, but I couldn't help myself. As you all know, uh, Saturday, April 30th was Independent Bookstore Day uh, and I combined my passion with my husband's passion, which is motorcycle riding. And we did kind of a tour and got to as many independent bookstores as we could on Saturday. And I thought that was a perfect opportunity to make a vlog and share it with you. We had six on our route to do uh, because of poor planning. Uh, we didn't get to the sixth one. We did all the closest ones to where I live because this 52 year old bottom can only stay in that motorcycle seat for so long. And I don't know if other states are doing this similar thing, but in the state of Connecticut, they, they're doing kind of a celebration where there's 17 specific independent bookstores who are participating and you can get a passport and you go to each one and you get that passport stamped. And if you go to all 17 in the weekend, you have Saturday and Sunday to do it, uh, then you're entered into a drawing to win, I think like, I wanna say $50 from each of the bookstore, each of the participating bookstores. There was no way I was gonna be able to do that, but uh, I got the passport anyways, because they also have the slow and steady one where you have until September 5th to visit all 17, uh, which I do intend on doing. And I think you're entered into a drawing for a $25 gift certificate from each, and that's pretty good. But truly, I'm not really doing it for that. That'd be a nice bonus, but I really would love to visit all 17 participating independent bookstores. Here is video, uh, some of it is from the motorcycle, so you can see beautiful Connecticut uh, in between each bookstore, and I got kind of the front the storefront of each of the bookstores and uh, clips from inside. I hope you enjoy those. And then, of course, to support the independent bookstores, I did buy something from each bookstore. Um, not necessarily a book, though, uh, but I do have a few books to share with you that I'll share here at the end of this video, uh, a little mini haul and what I got from each bookstore. So I hope you enjoy.
Hi again, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed some of the Connecticut scenery. It really is beautiful. It's even more beautiful when the leaves have grown in a little bit more on the trees. Spring takes its sweet time coming to the good old New England. So, but still beautiful ride, beautiful day, super fun going to these bookstores. We didn't plan properly. So the last one we were going to go to, by the time we were on our way there, it was um, 50 minutes before it closed. So we knew we weren't going to make it. But I went the next day to that bookstore and then another one. And then I ran into another snafu. You'll see the very last, well, you saw <laughs> the very last one. If it looked closed, it's because it was. It's so weird. It said online that it was open. It didn't look like it was anywhere near being open to the public. That was kind of a bust, but oh well. I do have a haul for you. I can't remember if I've said either out loud or just in my head in one of my previous videos. I won't be doing hauls a whole lot because like I said, I before, I know I've said before, <laughs> I am trying to make it through my personal library before I add to it, but I had to support Independent Bookstore Day. And so I didn't buy a book in every single one that I visited, but I did. I do have a haul for you. So I, I also am gonna share some books that I happened to receive the day after we did this. I got a gift from a friend sent to me just, just unexpectedly, which was a lovely uh, surprise. Book mail is always the best kind of mail. And then I forgot that I had ordered a book that I'm doing the readathon with Jim of Books and Danny's Book World and I think Novel Novels all of course, put that all down the doodly doo. But anyways, I ordered the first book from that series, and that's the Tudor Readathon, and we're reading the Six Queens series by Allison Weir, and so that came. So I'll share that with you. And as a matter of fact, I'll start with that. Uh, I'm sitting here trying to play a guessing game, and I have the book right here. So the first book is uh, Catherine of Aragon by Allison Weir. Uh, Catherine of Aragon, the true queen. I could just look. The True Queen. <laughs> and yes, this is the first of six books of uh, the six queens of Henry VIII, I believe. Yes. This is historical fiction, uh, and I think it follows historically pretty well, but then, of course, you know, add some yummy dialogue, probably add some juicy scenes. I watched the Tudor series. I know what happens in those castles. I'm reading that for the readathon. I'm super excited. Oh, and I ordered this from Pango Books, and if you haven't checked out Pango Books, um, I'm not a paid advertiser or anything like this, but I use Pango Books. I sell and I buy on there. And I got this for $2.75. So it's a pretty cool app that you can find some inexpensive books. That I only sell books on there if they're fairly newer books. Um, and then I only keep it on there for a limited amount of time. And if they don't sell, then I'll put it in a little free library or donate it. Uh, but I don't put on really old books. Um, I usually just put on either super popular books, relatively new books, anyways. So that's the first one in the haul. And then the gift that my friend Danny sent me, um, it's got a sticker on the front. We know we hate stickers. I can't get the sticker off. Anyway, she sent me The Age of Light by Whitney Scherer. I've never heard of this book, but she, uh, this is the best kind of recommendation. She got it as a gift from her boyfriend's mom and she loved it. And so, and she thought that we were in a book club together for 10 years, so she knows my taste. So she sent it along. So yeah, and that was such a surprise. I believe this is also historical fiction. She went to Paris to start over to make art instead of being made into it. Uh, it's a debut novel. It's placed in Paris. It's right around World War II. So yeah, that's right up my street. Age of life. All right, now on to the books that I got from my little jaunt in the independent bookstore day. I won't be able to remember what things I got from which store, so I'm probably not gonna be too detailed about that. But the books that I didn't get a book from, um, I got a Connecticut magnet for my book trolley. Well, that was kind of cute. And then I got a reusable bag, which I thought was super cute. Um, this is made by Blue Bags. Blue is the new green, it says. And I just thought it was cute colors. 
You know, I got this one from the first book, Bennett's Books, because it was the really the only, I think, used bookstore. Um, that was the one that was really, really crowded. Uh, I could spend days in there. It was super crowded. It had a, a ton of books and a ton of good ones, too. I could have... I could have broken the bank in that one if I had the mind to do that, but I didn't. I did get though um, a Yaga Yasi book, uh, Transcendent Kingdom. This is on my. This has been on my TBR. I have not read her yet. I also want to read Homegoing, but I picked this up for four bucks. You can't beat that with a stick. Real quickly, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you have heard of this, but it says Gifty is a sixth year PhD candidate in neuroscience at the Stanford University School of Medicine, studying reward seeking behavior in mice and the neural circuits of depression and addiction. Her brother, Nana, was a gifted high school athlete who died of a heroin overdose after an ankle injury left him hooked on OxyContin. Her suicidal mother is living in her bed. Gifty is determined to discover the scientific basis for the suffering she sees all around her, but even as she turns to the hard sciences to unlock the mystery of her family's loss, she finds herself hungering for her childhood faith and grappling with the evangelical church in which she was raised, whose promise of salvation remains as tantalizing as it is elusive. That really hurt. It probably would have been a lot better if I wore my reading glasses. <laughs> so... As you know, if you're not new here, you know that I want to read the shortlist for the Women's Prize for Fiction, and there's two books that I have left to read. Of course, the last two, at least in the United States, are not available in paperback, and so I had to buy two hardbacks, and that made my derriere twitch like you would not believe. But I'm not a fan of buying hardbacks. I just, I prefer to wait for, for the paperbacks, but anyways... I won't complain too much. So the next book I bought was The Island of the Missing Trees. The Island of Missing Trees by Elise Shafak. Uh, so yes, this is on the short list for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I did not realize it was also Reese's Book Club. I don't really follow her book club, but so yeah, I'm actually really excited about this. It's, uh, I believe it's magical realism and some historical fiction. Uh, two teenagers, a Greek Cypriot and a Turkish Cypriot meet at a taverna on the island they both call home. I think their love is somewhat taboo because of where they come from. There's also, I believe, a fig tree where there's a perspective that comes from the fig tree. I'm super, this is a moving, beautifully written and delicately constructed story of love, division, transcendence, history and eco-consciousness. Definitely up my street. I'm really excited about this one. This was a, a somewhat bittersweet. This is the other hardcover that I was forced to buy. My husband's like, you're not forced to buy anything. He does, he knows nothing, Jon Snow. He knows nothing. The next one was uh, the Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. The cool thing about this is the only uh, copies they had were signed copies. So, I mean, if you're gonna get a hardcover, you might as well get a signed copy. Eee! So initially when I started fo to follow the Women's Prize for Fiction, this wasn't on my initial list of books that I wanted to read. But the more I heard about it, the more it kind of intrigued me. This one is a chunk to start. Good God, at least the font is a decent size. It's like 550 pages. Ruth, man. Let's see, a brilliantly inventive novel about loss growing up and our relationships with things. I understand that, uh, it has to deal with grief and the main character starts to hear inanimate objects talk to him. So we'll see how that goes. I am excited to read it though. Truly I am. Might not seem like it, but I am. Then I can thank Gloria Z. Thompson for this next purchase. I'm super excited about this one. Uh, I heard her talk about this and it sounds like such a wonderful story. And that is Penguin the Magpie, uh, the odd little bird who saved a family. This is nonfiction. It's by Cameron Bloom and Bradley Trevor Grieve. And um, it looks like they made a Netflix movie called Penguin Bloom. You might have already heard of that. Uh, but this is a wonderfully, it's got photographs. It follows the family's journey of recovery, hope, and courage as they nurse an injured magpie back to health. When Sam Bloom suffers a near-fatal fall during a vacation, she is left paralyzed and deeply depressed. One of the family's three sons, reeling from the tragic accident, discovers an abandoned and injured magpie, magpie chick and brings her home to nurse. The boys name the bird Penguin for her black and white plumage. As they nurse Penguin back to health, the incredible joy, playfulness, and strength she exudes fortify the family and help lift Sam's spirits and courage. Beautiful photos of the family illustrate the healing journey they took 
with this magnificent magpie. So I'm really excited to get into this one. Thank you, Gloria. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna love it. The next book I got was Deacon King Kong by James McBride. I can't remember where I heard of this book, um, but I had bought this before, but I have a fun thing for my birthday last year. Uh, I did, I bought like six books, six new and paperback books. And then I went to just random little free libraries and dropped them off. If you follow me on Instagram, I did a little, you can see the, the you can see which little free libraries I went to and which books I dropped off. It was super fun. Um, but anyways, this is one of the ones I picked up and I almost didn't drop it off because I really wanted to read it. Um, and so when I saw it, I decided to get that. In September 1969, an old church deacon known as Sport Coat shuffles into the courtyard of the Causeway Housing Projects in South Brooklyn, pulls a 38 from his pocket in front of everybody, shoots the project's drug dealer at point blank range. The reasons for this burst of violence and the consequences that spring from it are at the heart of Deacon King Kong. McBride brings to vivid life the people affecting, affected by the shooting, the victim, the African-American and Latin residents who witnessed it, the local cops assigned to investigate the members of the Five Ends Baptist Church where Sport Coat was deacon, the neighborhood's Italian mobsters and Sport Coat himself. So, yes. Oh, it says the funny, surprising story of the shooting of a Brooklyn drug dealer and the people who witnessed it. If you're familiar with me at all, you know that when there's humor infused in tragedy, I really dig that. So there's that one. And finally, this one I just kind of pulled off the shelf. I didn't know really what I was going to get from each one. This was more like spontaneous grabs off the shelf that I knew were on my TBR. Now, this particular one isn't on my TBR, but... If you've watched my videos before, you know how much I loved The Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne, which was my favorite book of April. And um, I've read a couple of his other ones. Of course, I read The Boy in the Striped Pajamas and I read a, La a Ladder to the Sky. Really enjoyed those as well. And so I will eventually be reading all of his books. I saw this one, so I grabbed it. And this is called The Absolutist by, of course, John Boyne. Um, I don't even know what it's about. It is September 1919 and 21-year-old Tristan Sadler takes a train from London to Norwich to deliver a package of letters to the sister of Will Bancroft, the man he fought alongside during the Great War. But the letters are not the real reason for Tristan's visit. He can no longer keep a secret and has finally found the courage to unburden himself of it. As he recounts the horrific details of what to him became a senseless war, he also speaks of his friendship with Will, from their first meeting on the training grounds at Aldershot to their farewell in the trenches of northern France. The intensity of their bond brought Tristan happiness and self-discovery as well as confusion and unbearable pain. The Absolutist is a masterful, unforgettable tale of passion, jealousy, heroism, and betrayal set in one of the most gruesome trenches of France during World War I. <sighs> Never heard of it. Never seen anybody talk about it. Super excited about it. John Boyne. I adore you. So that's it. That's my book haul. That will be one of the few book haul that you'll see for me. Uh, but it was super fun and I did it for a good cause. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. I hope you enjoyed my trip uh, with my husband on the motorcycle going to all the different independent bookstores. This was super fun for me. And I would love to hear if you celebrated this year. Please Feel free to comment down in the doodly doo. I would love to hear your stories or any comments on any of these books. Have you read them? What did you think? I'm always happy to hear from you. I respond to each and every one of your comments. It really makes my day. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're still watching, I'd really appreciate if you gave that like button a boop and a subscribe would be much appreciated. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.